Alright, this video is going to show you the basics of 2D sketching in Inventor 2014. When we open up our new IPT file, usually the first thing that we're going to do is to create a 2D sketch that's going to get us going. We can also use these uh, 2D sketches to make really intricate and elaborate uh, geometries if we need to. So we come up here to our 3D model tab, and all the way to the left is our 2D sketch tool. We click that, and since we don't have any 3D geometries in our workspace right now, it pulls up our three origin planes, and it asks us to pick one of these flat planes to start drawing on. And if you notice, and they uh, they correspond to the cube over here. So this bottom flat facing one, that's the uh, that's the top of our cube. So this flat face is facing up and down. Uh, likewise, the front plane and the side plane. I'm going to start drawing on our front plane, and you notice as soon as I click it that my navigation cube shows me I'm in the front plane. Uh, also notice that in the history browser, uh, I I have a new entry here, sketch one. So um, every sketch that I make will appear over here in the browser, and if we ever need to modify a sketch, we've got to come back to the right one and make sure that we're doing it in that sketch. We'll see that in a minute. Um, but mostly, the biggest difference here is that uh, we've got a new tab up here. I'm not in the 3D model tab anymore. I'm in the sketch tab. And uh, what this tells me is that I'm in sketch mode. As soon as I'm done with my sketch, I need to come over here and click finish sketch before I can do anything in 3D land. So these are my basic 2D drawing tools. Uh, I'll walk through each one and do a little bit of a demo on, on each one. My line tool basically just wants me to click two points and it gives me a line between those two points. The line has no thickness, it's just a hairline, um, so it is still a flat object. I'm going to start right here with my first click in the origin and I, as I drag my cursor out toward my second click I notice a couple of things. One, uh, the highlighted number, they're asking for the length of the line, so if I am do it, making this part from a drawing and I can see that the drawing uh, has a very specific dimension, I can punch that in right now, and then if I hit the tab key on my keyboard, uh, the angle highlights. So, hit it again, I'm going to go back and set my distance at 1.5, and it's in inches by default. So, I hit tab, and it not only snaps this line out to 1.5 inches, but it highlights that angle for me, and if I want to punch this thing in at 25.3 degrees, because my drawing tells me to, then I can, I can punch in a number that specific and hit enter, and that line will snap to these very specific uh, measurements. I click the front of the cube, and it shows me everything that is, it, that is within view. Uh, if I had gotten these dimensions wrong and needed to edit them, I can double click on these white little ghost dimensions and punch in the actual value for the angle or distance that I wanted to uh, that I wanted to create. Say I don't have these dimensions and they uh, they got deleted or they were never there. You know, if they won't be there if you just arbitrarily choose the line tool and kind of stretch out and make your second click. Notice there are no dimensions because I didn't specify anything. I can come up here into the ribbon, I can choose my dimension tool, and I can double click this line to create these little dimensions. So I just made a line, I don't like the size that it is, so I'm going to come back here, make a dimension for it, and edit that dimension to be specifically what I want. <coughs> So this line is not what I want, so I delete it, and I'll show you how to use some of these other tools. We've got the rectangle tool, which pretty much works the same way. It wants a, a click for the start and a click for the end, but along the way we can specify specific dimensions. So if our drawing tells us that we're making a rectangle that is 2 inches long by 3 inches high, we can type those two things in by just pressing the tab key to toggle back and forth between the two. When I'm ready, I hit enter, and the rectangle generates to exactly the size that I wanted it. And once again, we can update these little ghost dimensions to be the size that we actually need. Uh, if I needed to create shapes without a, a nice reference point, then I might need to create a reference point. Usually the way that I'll do that is by snapping lines that are specific distance to get me to uh, a, a place. So if I needed to make a circle, 
I would need two things. I would need a, a center point and then a diameter. Sometimes placing that center point is a little bit tough, so what I did was used lines to make it from this bottom corner to the point that I actually want the center, and that gives me a reliable snap point to create my center point from. And uh, now I type in what I want the diameter of that circle to be, and I hit enter. So, once again, little dimension, if I want to change that, I double click it and I hit enter, and it allows me to change the size of that diameter. And I can always trim away the extra segments of lines that I don't want with my trim tool. So if I'm done with my sketch, I come up here and I hit finish sketch. And what that does is it takes me out of my sketch tab and puts me back into my 3D model tab. I'm in 3D land once again. I still have my sketch over here in the history browser. If I hover over it, you can see a highlight and everything that's a part of it. Uh, if I wanted to make an edit to this sketch, there's, I can either right-click it and choose to edit the sketch, or uh, I can come over here into the history browser and double-click it. What I can't do is come back here and hit create new sketch and uh, select that same plane and, and act like I am modifying the sketch. Notice what's happened over here in the history browser is I've created sketch 2, and nothing in sketch 2 can interact with anything in sketch 1. So. If I was in sketch one, I should have a nice green little snap point here in this corner, but I don't. Um, so if I needed to, uh, if I needed to make an edit to sketch one, I would need to double click on sketch one, and then I'd be able to reference any of the snap points that are uh, that are used in this sketch. Once our sketch is finished, we click finish sketch, and it brings us back to. 3D world. If we need to save a file, it will not let us save it in sketch mode. We've got to finish the sketch first.